My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. I want to say welcome to drboycetv.com, the home for intelligent black people. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. I wanted to talk about the stock market and what's going on with that, uh, as well as where I think the opportunities lie. My stock pick of the week, I'll give you that toward the end of the podcast. Also, I want to talk about Jay-Z. Jay-Z um, put out a verse today that I saw uh, on the Shade Rooms channel, and uh, it's about him having this billionaire treat. So we're going to talk about Jay-Z's billionaire tree and kind of dissect that. So I'm going to give you the Dr. Boyce breakdown on all this. So get comfortable, buck up seatbelt. We're going to get started on drboystv.com right in three, two, one, and go. Here we are, clan, the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who got to delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co-sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Please, none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to DrBoyceTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. I want to say hi to everybody on the platform. Also, hello to everybody on Instagram. My Instagram is the real Boyce Watkins, if you haven't checked that out. And uh, also, before I begin uh, the conversation, I always have to give out like a quick public service announcement. Uh, there are fake Boyce Watkins accounts out here where there are people that are trying to scam you and uh, they're sending you messages to your inbox, ask you to call them, invite you to invest in these shady Bitcoin investments and stuff like that. That is not me. I will never inbox you and I will never inbox and say, here's my phone number, call me. Or if you call me, ask to talk to my wife or ask to do a Zoom meeting so you can look me in the face and see my wife next to me. Then you'll know it's me. But I just want to have to uh, I want to mention that to you guys so that nobody gets hurt uh, because uh, there are people out here. Some of the, some people in the audience literally have had thousands of dollars taken from them by these people. So if you see these accounts, I hope you'll take a minute to uh, to block them, uh, report them and all these other things and cuss them out too while you at it just as a favor to me. All right. So the, um, so moving on, moving on. All right. So what's going on, everybody? Eddie and Warren, shout out the city. Let me know your city you're from. I see Tammy and uh, DDS, my brother. How you doing, man? Best moderator ever. I just want you to, I just, I have to get, throw that out there for you, man. Uh, Big Uzi's already jumping in with, with an opinion. Uh, Michael and Isaiah Moore. Hello, and Linda Johnson and uh, Shani, Shan, Shanacy. Is that what it says? Shanacy 007. You know, 007, I was thinking about that. I saw this trailer that was a 007 trailer with Idris Elba in it, but it wasn't a real trailer. Somebody literally took a bunch of his movie clips where he was doing 007 type stuff and put James Bond music on it. And I really thought they had picked him as the 007 and they didn't pick him. It was kind of crazy. I, people got a lot of time on their hands. But anyway, so um, you know, I, I saw this thing that, I, okay, so here's how my day started, right? So I started off wanting to talk to you guys about uh, what's going on with your stocks today? The stock market has taken a major dip, and uh, and I should I am going to quickly address that. In fact, by the time I get done, I'm going to give you a stock pick of the week uh, that I really believe in now. Now that the market's actually dipped a little bit, the market's down almost 800 points, and the reason it's down 800 points. Yesterday, I told you guys on Twitter, my Twitter's Doctor Boyce Watkins in the number one, Dr. Boyce Watkins one. Make sure you follow me because I'll throw in little hints. I mentioned to you guys yesterday that the uh, that the that today was going to be a big day in the stock market, and I told. I mentioned that last night, and today was a big day. Today was a huge day. The market dipped, 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 uh, and it dipped largely because the Fed chair basically stepped out and said, we are going to push hard. We're going to increase interest rates no matter what it takes. We got to beat the hell out of the economy and knock it down and kill it, blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. <sighs> Whenever there is a problem, there is an opportunity. Whenever there is this kind of chaos, there's a chance for you to make money. This is a beautiful market to make money in, I promise you. Uh, in fact, there's a guy named Tom Lee of Fundstrat who basically says that a lot of the indicators that the Fed uses in order to uh, determine how bad to how much to increase interest rates, it's already shown that inflation's already dropping, right? So, so instead of just watching the Fed, the smart people don't watch the Fed. You watch what the Fed is watching. Right. So you watch what you don't watch them and react to them. You react to what they're reacting to so you can get ahead of the game. A lot of wealth is about getting ahead of the game. That's what it is. So so uh, speaking of that, 
Let's talk about somebody who's ahead of the game uh, economically. There's this rapper by the name of Jay-Z. You might have heard of him. And uh, and there's another famous rapper that I just respect a lot that's actually in the chat right now by the name of Willie D from the Ghetto Boys. Yeah, and your mind is not playing tricks on you. Willie D is in the building. God bless you, man. That's a good brother. He was in my wedding. I love this brother a lot. And, uh, and so Jay-Z uh, is a guy uh, similar to Willie, actually, who understands economics really well. You know, uh, he is a guy that has uh, I've been impressed with Jay-Z in his career, largely because Jay-Z has been um, he's he he decided he wanted to be a grown ass man. You know, he decided he wanted to grow up. A lot of these rappers don't grow up and it looks kind of weird when you're like 50 and you're trying to act like you're 20. And and it, it just doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. I promise you. Don't don't try to do that. And, and so with, with Jay-Z, um, I've watched him evolve through the years. You know, I saw him when he first started off. Uh, you know, and then he did Hard Knock Life and all the other stuff. I saw stuff he did with Dame Dash. You guys have probably seen Dame Dash on this show. If you've been watching long enough, there was a time where Dame used to come around a lot. And uh, we, Dame and I did a partnership together on something called Intelligent Boss Moves uh, or IBM. And, uh, and that was uh, something fun that we did. And uh, Dame is a smart guy. But I'm going to say uh, Dame, Dame is smart, uh, but Jay-Z, in terms of making money, Jay-Z has really been the one who's kind of – just knocked it out the park. Not to say Dame doesn't add value, not to say you can't learn things from him, but uh, in terms of, you know, that billionaire status and all that, that's where Jay is right now. And I do believe he's a billionaire. I don't think he's pretending. I think he really has achieved that status. So so anyway, um, I saw that uh, that he did this verse on a DJ Khaled song. I forgot the name of the song. It was had the word God in it, on God or God me god or i'm a god i don't know it's had some of the word god i don't know everybody want to be god and jehovah and and jesus and all that uh but anyway so in this song he was talking about his billionaire tree uh his tree of billionaires and he mentions uh a few he mentions himself he mentions kanye west he mentions rihanna who got, i guess god did thank you Ray. I, I forgot the name of the song i don't really keep up with other people's stuff i, I focus on my work i ain't really on a rapper's testicles like that uh but anyway not to say you are just i'm not i, I think that as a community just so you know i want to make this real clear for you guys um there was a study uh, pay attention now this has to do with black wealth there was a study uh by um nielsen nielsen is the company that tells companies how to sell products to black people or really anybody but they were talking specifically about black people you know what they said they said african americans are heavily influenced by entertainers especially rappers they said if you could sell black people poison on a stick and if you get a rapper to endorse it black people will buy it because they love the celebrities now i'm gonna just be honest with you guys i'm gonna be honest i think that part of that is driven by the fact that we don't know who we are i believe that when you tap into your own greatness you won't be worried about some rapper rapping about a life that probably ain't even real anyway. You know, seriously, you won't even be all caught up in what somebody else is doing. You'll be focused on what you're doing. So I'm not really here to talk so much just about what Jay-Z is doing, I, only to the extent that I want to talk about how it impacts what you're doing. You know, because here's the thing. This is important for you to understand as black people. Most of y'all ain't going to make a nickel busting a rhyme for nobody. You got all your black boys going to school thinking they're going to be the next Jay-Z. Well, 99.9999999% of them ain't going to make a nickel rapping. You know, most of them think they're going to be the next LeBron. 99.9999999% of them will never make a nickel playing basketball. They think they're going to be in the NFL. 99.9999999% of them will never make a nickel throwing a football. So, so here's your paradox. Here's your problem. This is where uh, th this is the this is the the, the contradiction or the um uh, not, uh you, th just the trap. It's a trap, right? My friend, the Wall Street trapper, is always talking about the trap. Let's talk about this trap. There is the entertainment trap that a lot of our kids fall into, where one per you have ten thousand black boys that all say they want to be the next Jay Z. Nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine of them don't accomplish any of that. So what do you do with the other 9,999? What do you do with them? I mean, do, you, do you just say everybody should just try to become the next Jay-Z and that's it? Or we should all become entertainers or all become athletes? No, you have to spread out. You have to do other things. Most of the millionaires I know did not become millionaires through entertainment. In fact, most of the entertainers I know are not actually millionaires. Uh, most of the people I know who became millionaires became millionaires through things like, um, like, like, like investing heavily in their 401k plan over a 25 or 30 year period. They became millionaires by learning entrepreneurship at an early age and starting a business that eventually made them $100,000 a month. 
Uh, they became millionaires by buying real estate every chance that they could, could get and then passing it down to the next generation so that when the prices of, that, of those assets go up, their children end up becoming extremely wealthy. That's where the real millionaires and billionaires come from in the black community. And one of the uh, one of the false flags that's dropped on our community is this image of the entertainer as kind of the beacon of hope and possibility for black people. No, that's not a beacon of hope and possibility for everybody. That's a beacon of hope for Jay-Z, uh, for Little Blue Ivy. That's a beacon of hope for their space, for their circle. But it's not necessarily something that uh, that adds instant or immediate value to what you're doing. OK, so so what what so here's what I want to dig into. Hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, share, subscribe. So let, let's give Jay-Z his his props, though. Uh, let me tell you how he made a lot of his money. Let me see here. Uh, I'm going to pull this up. Hit that thumbs up button while you do that. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, he says that uh, let's see, it says here on Afrotech, uh, they said that the uh, here they said uh, before Jay-Z ever invested one dollar in, in a company that wasn't his. I let's see. He made north of 750 million. Jay Z first started brushing the billionaire status in 2014 when he married Beyonce. At that time, their combined net worth was a billion dollars, though individually he was worth 600 million. So that's the first little lesson I think that you can actually pick up from this. Uh, marriage and family is one of the great keys to wealth. And when they destroyed your families uh, it, through mass incarceration, through uh, you know a dumping crack in the black community, and all these other things that they did. They literally took trillions of dollars of wealth out of the black community when they did that. They took trillions of dollars away from you when they destroyed your families, because a lot of y'all think you could do it all by yourself. You, you, you a strong black woman who don't need no man or you a dude who don't want to deal with these women. And don't, I ain't messing around with these single moms. I ain't trying to be. Well, you need the black woman, black man, whether you want to admit it or not. And black women, you need us, whether you want to admit it or not. We are providers and protectors. We're naturally good at certain things, just like you're naturally good at certain things. And so what one thing Jay-Z did that I thought was really a grown ass man move was, yeah, he could have been a player and a pimp. I mean, he had holes in every area code. Y'all remember that? I got holes. I got holes. Right. Remember that song? Remember that? Right. He had holes in every area code, but he, he realized that his net worth would go up by having a wife who is a powerhouse superstar in her own right. You know, Beyonce is very powerful in her own right. And apparently Jay-Z, for whatever reason, again, with, even with all the blustery egos of hip hop, like I, I control these women, I tell these women what to do. Uh, Jay-Z humbled himself enough to allow his wife to keep shining, right? She's a shiner just like him and they just shine together. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, here's the, here's the other thing too. Before you get caught up in the fairy tale, you got to understand marriage is hard. You know, a lot of people... Uh, a lot of the divorce happens because people think marriage is a fairy tale. They think every day is wonderful and sunny and just and just you know just beautiful. And, and then when it's not like that, they they get divorced, right? That's why everybody gets divorced so fast. Uh, and 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 the and if I were you, if you ever think about getting married, don't get your advice off the internet. Number one, because most of these people on the internet that give relationship advice are just lonely trolls who are just sitting in their mama's basement making videos. The first good thing that ever happened in their life was that somebody paid attention to them so they know how to say things that sound good. And a lot of them are just telling you what you want to hear so that you can feel better about your poor choices. They, they So don't, don't get your advice from the internet. If I want to get marriage advice or when I got marriage advice, I went to people like my father who knows how to be married for 50 years. And I, and I went to people like Mike Roberts. Mike Roberts is a billionaire who's coming to the All Black National Convention. And he gave me advice on how he stayed married to his wife for all those years. George C. Frazier, another strong black man who came into this platform, he talked about being married to his wife for 50 years. I listened to Farrakhan, who's been married for many, many years. So I want to hear from the people who actually did it. That's my point. I want to hear from the people who actually did it, not from the people who can theoretically tell you how it might be doable. Or, or to tell you, like, seriously, somebody that done got two, three divorces, single as hell, ain't nowhere. Try, basically, some of, these, some of these relationship gurus, I kid you not, are having sex with the women who are coming to their channels every day, right? <laughs> but yet you're getting advice from these people who literally know how to make money by telling you what you want to hear instead of telling you what you need to hear. Because, because discipline is hard. You know, getting challenged is hard. Accountability is hard. Why would you want accountability when you can sit around and just have somebody just tell you that, well, the reason don't no man want to be with you is because you're too strong and you're a strong black woman and they can't handle you because you too much, whatever. Or, or these women, their standards are too high and, and these modern women are screwed up. And blah, blah, blah. Don't do not do that. <laughs> That's not cool. Like Jay, So what I like about Jay-Z, let's get back to Jay, is I like the fact that he 
got with a woman that had her own goals, her own dreams. Somehow they put together a family plan. I'm sure it wasn't pretty. I'm sure that if you pull back the, the curtain on their relationship, they've done a good job of maintaining the mystique. They did the exact opposite of what Will and Jada did. Will and Jada told people to a little bit too much. Will and Jada let people in a little bit too far, and it, it ends up making them look a little bit crazy. Uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce have been very um, stoic. They've been they behave like royalty. They're just quiet. They don't respond to rumors or anything. Hardly they might might sort of cryptically respond to it in a verse, and that's part of their mystique. They made themselves uh, into this uh, respected couple in that way. But I bet you every nickel in my bank account that if you was to go into the inside of their uh, their little fortress, you would probably find all kinds of drama and chaos and everything else. I, I in fact there was a little bit of it that came out when um remember when Solange was kicking Jay-Z in the nuts in the elevator and stomping him and throwing stuff at him because she got mad about some, something that happened at the Met Gala, right? That to me was just, just a little peek inside the empire. So so don't think that it's perfect. And my point is to say that if you look at things in terms of a net worth legacy standpoint, Jay's done a great job of protecting his legacy and building a massive net worth that he's going to pass to his children, his descendants. Uh, he's done a good job of making other people rich. I talked to Kanye on the phone one time. First thing he told me in the first two minutes was that he was worth $4.6 billion. I did not give a shit. <laughs> I wanted to talk about Kanye West. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I want to talk about Dr. Claude Anderson. Um, I didn't really care how much money you have. I want to know what you're doing with the money that you have. I want to know how many other black people, I'm talking about in the thousands. To me, if you are a billionaire, again, I'm not being critical, but I will say that if you're a billionaire and you're black, uh, I don't want to hear about two or three people that you helped. I don't want to hear about your children. Of course, your, your children are supposed to be wealthy. I don't want to hear about your cousin. I don't want to hear about a couple artists that work for you. I want to hear about 20,000 jobs you created in a black neighborhood. Like I, I want to hear about the neighborhood you grew up in. Again, I want to be able to go to the Marcy Projects where Jay-Z grew up. And I want to be able to find 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 people who can say our lives are better because of his success. I, I, I'd love to see that. I would love to see. And I'm not criticizing. I'm just kind of laying out a framework of thought here to help you understand what economic, what, what positive economic contagion looks like. Now, I've talked to you guys about contagion before. Contagion is just like a virus, you know, it's, or it's, but it's a good virus, right? Or it could be good or it could be bad. Uh, Andrew Caroli, who was on my dissertation, he was my dissertation chair when I wrote my, when I got my PhD in finance, he was an expert on contagion. And the thing about contagion is this, your success should be contagious. There should be thousands and thousands and thousands of people whose lives are better because of something that Jay-Z did. There should be thousands and thousands and thousands of black people whose property values have gone up perhaps because of some things that he did in that in the old neighborhood he grew, he grew up in. I'll give you an example. Kenny Gamble out of Philadelphia. Let me tell you what Kenny did. Kenny went to, uh, when Kenny got his first record deal, Kenny did not, he saw his friends buying fancy cars and fur coats and all kinds of silly stuff. And you know what Kenny did? Kenny said, he went to this uh, Jewish man and said, I have a bunch of money and I need to learn how to manage my money. Where do I put it? So this man taught him what to do with his money. You know what Kenny did? Kenny went to his old neighborhood that nobody wanted to live in. The, the houses were selling dirt cheap because the neighborhood was torn down. It was full of pimps and, and, and pimps and hoes and drug addicts and everything else. You know what he did? He bought dozens and dozens and dozens of houses. He bought entire city blocks of property in this area. Now, here's what happened. So years later, when white folks realized that this was prime real estate, when they realized that, whoa, wait a minute, <laughs> Philadelphia property on the riverfront is actually good property, they came back and they started gentrification. You know what? He was already there. Because like I told you on the very beginning, the people who have the wealth are the people who anticipate the move. They don't they don't follow other people. They they are the leaders that other people follow. They make the move before everybody else moves. So, so Kenny was already planning. He was already posted up in these neighborhoods when they came back to go buy this property. So Kenny held on to some of it. I'm sure he sold some of it. But as a result, I can walk through part, so parts of Philadelphia with prime real estate and they will say Kenny Gamble owns this entire block or he this big gigantic school. He owns this school, this apartment building. Oh, that's his apartment building. And so, so really what I'm saying is that um, that has to be the model of, of prosperity for black people. It can't be something where you get caught up in forgetting about your own life because you're so busy worried about what a celebrity is doing or worshiping what a celebrity has. Uh, and so I love 
you know, what Jay-Z's talking about now. I love what he's doing. I think he's conducting himself in, a, in an appropriate way. There's still more things that can be done, but I but I generally like it. What I did not really enjoy so much was I still remember that lyric. Remember that great album that he did with Kanye uh, where they did that joint album together? And then there was that line where he said something like, can you see the private jet flying over you? And that was like right in the middle of an economic downturn. And I was like, why are you rapping about private jets flying over poor people? Like, and these are your fans. That reminds me of those pimping pastors, you know, where you got the nice shiny church with the gold, you know, the gold pillars in it. And you rolling up in a Cadillac with a $2,000 suit and your, your church is literally in the middle of a torn down, disgusting neighborhood. Seriously, I mean, that's crazy to me. How in the hell can you do that? How do, and, and, and you need to point these things out. I'm not saying that we need to attack and beat up people for this, but it needs to be kind of addressed. You know, if, if you are truly embracing what prosperity is supposed to look like, then you should be in a position where the, the people around you, I'm talking about lots of people, not just a couple, not just your homeboys, not just the people in your entourage, but lots of people are benefiting. So like when I went through um, West Atlanta one time, my wife and I went running through West Atlanta, which was a pretty, this part was pretty torn down. I ran to my grandmother's grave. My grandmother, Felicia, she's on the wall right here. She's the Panther. We named our Panther Felicia in the Black Business School. I went to uh, jogging to go find her grave. And, and and I ran through this part of West Atlanta that looked, it, it, it was the hood. It was pretty torn down. And the only thing I saw, I saw almost no signs of economic prosperity except the big shiny church. I saw a big shiny church and it was next to all these torn down aban abandoned buildings, this abandoned grocery store, all this other stuff. But this church was as beautiful as, as you can imagine. And I also saw corner stores um, owned by Arabs. I saw that. I saw the Arabs were making money. The church was getting money. And then I saw a construction project where every single worker on the construction project was white or Hispanic. And they had clearly come from other neighborhoods. And then I saw at that abandoned grocery store, I saw a bunch of black men just sitting there, just talking and drinking or whatever. Right. And so this to me is, is, is something that we have to kind of observe this and understand this. How does this dyna dynamic take place? If you have this church and you are collecting enough tithes to make your building shiny and beautiful, maybe you could also embrace the idea of buying up some of that property in the area and somehow doing things that go outside of the walls of that church. Right. So so the same thing is true with the rappers. I think that rappers, it's we got to get past that day of of childish ego being the defining characteristic of what it means to be a hip hop artist. You know, that child, that that ego where you sit in front of a bunch of people with low self-esteem and talk about how great you are. Every verse is like how great I am. I'm so this. I'll fuck your woman like that. And I got the I got look at how much money I got. Look at my car. Look at my whatever. Right. That that's 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 just kind of immature. It really is. It's not it's not interesting to intelligent people. Uh, maybe maybe people with low self-esteem like it because it makes them feel better about something. I don't know what. But I'm going to tell you, I, I personally don't think it's it's something that we should be applauding. So ultimately, I, I would say that when it comes to wealth and, and economics and everything, I think Jay's done a good job, uh, you know, to this point. But I think at the same time, there's so much more that can be done because what we really need in the black community is we need industrialists. We need, you know, pay attention now. Uh, if you talk about uh, Jay, Kanye and any anybody else in hip hop who's a billionaire, even Rihanna, Rihanna's doing great with her Fenty brand and all that. Good, Good for her. How many thousands of jobs have they created for black people? I'm not criticizing. I'm just asking a question. How many thousands of jobs? Are they 10,000, 20,000, 30,000? Let me give you a comparison point. Jeff Bezos, who runs Amazon, has created 1.1 million jobs for people who are mostly not black. Elon Musk has created several hundred thousand jobs between Tesla and SpaceX. So, so to me, if you're bragging about how much wealth you have, if that's what you want to do, I, I would love to see the artists brag about how many thousands of jobs they've created. Not, you know, I bought two or three chicken shacks and now, and now I, I gave jobs to my cousins. That's low level. That's baseline, lower level stuff. We really need to have industrialists in the community who truly want to do the Henry Ford thing and really innovate at, at a high enough level that it has a substantial impact on entire cities, entire states, entire communities, not just you and your cousin them and your baby mamas and your um and your entourage. That that's tiny level thinking in my opinion. And with all these millionaires going into the NBA every year, all these millionaires in the NFL, all these millionaire rappers that love to rap about how much money they have, um I would encourage you to really show that really show that that people are involved in this and, and and it's a hard conversation to have because when i come in and i say these things and i say let's let's level up our self-esteem and our expectations a little bit 
first thing you, you hear in some cases is, oh, well, you just be hating. You just hating. Doc. Why are you hating on hating on rappers? I don't hate on rappers. I'm I want them to be great. I'm trying to encourage them to do the to do what they can really do. Give give you something to really rap about. You know, because here's the problem. Here's the thing you got to really be honest about. Now, I'm not talking about Jay-Z now, but some of these rappers, the only reason some of these motherfuckers make money is because white folks love a good menstrual show. That's it. That's it. The reason that some of these rappers make so much money is because there are crowds full of white people all around the world who will pay your black ass a trillion dollars to get on stage and call yourself a nigga all day. They will pay you big money to get on stage and act like a, a buffoon. Pulling out your chain, my chain hang low, tattoos all up over your face, looking like your face look like somebody just stabbed you in the eye 14 times. You know, seriously, I talking about I got eight babies, mamas, and I'll make another one. You know, like seriously, white, white, really, dude? Really? I mean, do you really think when you're talking about some of this, some of the behavior that you see? I'm not talking about all the rappers. I ain't talking about Kendrick Lamar. I ain't talking about Kendrick. I'm talking, but uh, <laughs> I'm talking about some of the rappers. I ain't talking about D1. I'm talking about some of the rappers. I ain't talking about immortal technique, but I'm talking about some of the rappers. Some of these guys and some of the women make money. They make more money than you because white supremacy loves to see the black man presented as a thug and a whore. They love that. They're like, I will pay you all day. Here, Negro, you keep going. You keep twerking, bitch. You keep that. Keep, keep, come to get more thugged out. Oh, you, you will shoot your own cousin. That's good. You, you will shoot your mama in the face. Oh, that's, I like that. They cheer for that because that's how they see you. They see you like animals. Some of you, they, they really do. They really, they, you know, so, so some of us get it twisted. Some of us really think, guys. Oh gosh, here I am. I'm trying to be a regular law-abiding citizen. I'm and I'm I must be lame. Well, I'm trying to just love my wife and raise my children. That I must be a simp because I ain't I ain't fuck 18 girls last night. Uh, oh, well, I'm just trying to invest and save my money. Well, well, I'm I must not be doing it right. I need to go out here and, and act a fool. I need to go out here and embarrass myself. I need to go out here and talk about how many how much Gucci I bought. I need to take my whole paycheck and spend it on Gucci and Louis and tattoos and hoes if I'm gonna get any respect. Seriously, that's your problem. You 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 literally because we because again, this is a money thing. Let's talk about the money thing. Money tricks you, money tricks you. Money can trick you into believing that anything you have to do to get that money is okay. That if you got paid, you must have done something right. That if you got that, if, if, a, if a white man wrote you a big check, then, then you must be a successful black person. Well, I'm sorry. Some of them don't get paid to be successful. Some of them get paid to be epic failures. Sometimes the reason you get all the attention and all the money it's not because you are some sort of beacon of possibility and hope and, and prosperity and intelligence. It's because you're acting like a goddamn fool. And most normal people are looking at you like, I'm not going to do that for money. I'm not going to go on stage and act like that. Not in front of my family. I don't want to embarrass my kids and embarrass my family and, and have my mom and daddy look at me like I'm crazy. I'm not going to co-sign on that. So some of you end up broke because you are trying to do the right thing and live a decent life and make responsible choices. Some of you, uh, some, and, and it really sucks because I, I've just seen guys even because we get caught up in that. We get caught up in the celebrity of it all. So I've even seen nice quality men who can't get a certain kind of woman because she's been hypnotized by the big shiny object that she sees on stage. And, 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 and she has never been taught. Maybe her daddy never talked to her about understanding what a quality man really looks like. That a quality man is not going to threaten to beat you because you got smart with him. A quality man ain't going to go out here and do sh dumb shit to get himself sent to prison for 30 years. A quality man is not going to abandon his kids. A quality man ain't going to run around and have so much sex with so many women that he's going to give you every STD in the book. A quality man is not going to take your family money and go blow it at the mall. Like a quality man is not going to do that. So because she maybe never got taught this, she sees some of these people doing these ridiculous things again to get that money from white folks because white people will, will they will typically only pay a black man to, to behave in a ridiculous fashion they will not pay a black man to behave in a way that is outside of what they perceive as the stereotype the stereotype of the black male typically is he's an athlete he's an entertainer or he's a clown like one of those things you get he's a he's a jump he's a jump dribbling basketballs or throwing footballs he is uh he, he can bust a rap or he can he just knows how to act like a fool 
right? And, and so, so when you see when you have black men, and this is the problem, you have millions of black men who don't fit that stereotype. They're not six foot eight, two hundred and forty pounds. Uh, in fact, give me a yes or no. How many of y'all in here are not six foot eight, two hundred and forty pounds? Uh, give me a yes in the chat. Uh, give me a yes in the chat. If you have never ever made an album and you didn't wouldn't even know how to make one, you wouldn't even know how to make an album if you had to. Give me a yes in the chat. How many of y'all have never made a hip hop album in your life? Uh, give me a, give me a yes in the chat if you are not a good comedian. Like if you can't do you can't do what Kevin Hart does. You can't go on stage and make people laugh. You don't know how to do it, right? Like, but but maybe you know how to do these worthless things. Like maybe you know how to like be an accountant. Or maybe you know something equally worthless, like like you're going to medical school, or or you know how to like pay your taxes, and and or maybe you did something super lame. Maybe you're a big simp and you you like take care of your wife, or or maybe you're doing something really lame, like like raising the kids properly and actually giving them an appropriate amount of attention so they don't grow up traumatized, or you know, or maybe you did something uh, I don't know, really crazy, like investing and saving your money so your family can have a future. I mean, that's lame. What the hell's wrong with you? And so 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 let's just be clear. While we can celebrate and, and applaud the success of some of the entertainers and athletes, you got to understand they got a special ticket. They, 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 some of them, not all of them, but some of them get paid because they are supporting white supremacy. Because, because think about this. When you talk about white folks, Chris Rock actually pointed this out, actually, in a, in a really smart way. He said, he said, I live in a neighborhood where I live. Mary J. Blige lives across the street. She's one of the best singers, mo most respected entertainers in the world. And I live in the same neighborhood. He said, we live next door to a dentist. He said, and the dentist, he's not the best dentist in the world, right? He's just a dentist. <laughs> he just invested in, you know, and in, in, in own, own a dental practice. And that's how he got to live next to. So to, for me to be, as a black man, to live in the neighborhood, uh, same neighborhood as a wealthy dentist, I have to be one of the best comedians on the planet. She had to be one of the best singers on the globe. My wife don't like her singing, but I think she's pretty good. And, and, but, but, but him, he's just a regular dentist. So that to, that's white supremacy. White supremacy says that really with black folks, when you talk about who reaches that millionaire, multimillionaire, billionaire status, it's typically somebody in one of those very small select areas where they're doing something that America and the world allows black people to do. Right. They, you know, a black, it would be much harder for a black man to be a billionaire as a uh, as a doctor, lawyer or or whatever than it is if he is a rapper, even an ignorant rapper who raps about every single thing that destroys the black community from being high on drugs all the time to beating up his wife to uh, to to abandoning his kids to throwing all his money away. Like so. So so there there's there's certain pathways provided now where artists can actually support the community, in my view, is to realize that while that 0.1% of you gets that chance to stand on a stage full of white people and make $10 million doing it, there's millions of black people sitting in the back who will never get that shine and never get that respect. There's black scholars who never get a chance to be on TV when, because they want to go ask Lil Wayne questions about black politics and black economics. When he, Lil Wayne don't even want to answer the damn question and he ain't going to answer it right. Y'all seen him answer questions like that and he fucks it up every time. But it's not his fault. It's society's fault. That, why, why in the world are you even going to Lil Wayne or Al Sharpton to ask questions that should be asked of an economist or of, of, a, of a trained political scientist? And one of the things I would give Ice Cube credit for is that Ice Cube understood that. Ice Cube understands that there is a privilege that he receives by being a rapper. And he was a gangster rapper. He has, you know, he had verses like a bitch is a bitch, just stuff that, uh, that I hope he wouldn't repeat now, right? The things he said as a teenager, right? So he became Ice Cube, the big gangster rapper. And the first thing that he did that I really respected was that he, when he did his contract with Black America to help the Black community, he did it for the masses and he went and he involved all the Black people who never get a chance to be on CNN. He went and he got the scholars. He went and got the thinkers. He went and got your your real super, your hidden superstars in the community. Some of y'all are damn good at what you do. I see you. I see you. Some of y'all come to me with ideas for inventions that should be patented, that should get a billion dollars in funding, but you can't get no funding because they give that shit to white people. When Google has an office party and they want entertainment for the office party, they will bring in the Negroes. They'll bring in a Lizzo. They'll bring in a, a rapper. They'll bring in whatever. 
But when they're having the meeting of the engineers that are going to design the protocols for the internet and, and, and this, or, or the financiers who are going to decide the multi, make the billion dollar decisions, ain't no black people hardly ever in the room. Ain't no black. And it's not because black people did not apply for the job. It's because they looked over you because they say, wait, you're a Negro. You don't fit the description of a Google engineer, but you do fit the description of a rapper. Or I bet you can play basketball real well. Or, you know, or I bet you know the verses to every Cardi B song because you're a black woman. So that probably means you a hoe. <laughs> right. So 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 ultimately, these stereotypes, there is a price that is paid by black people. When you have people going out into the world misrepresenting the shit out of you and making you look like all you know how to do is become a pack of hoes and thugs. That's what they do. That's what they've done. That's the price we pay. And we paid that price. The people pay that price. The rappers benefit financially from the price that's paid because you misrepresent us to the point where even Africans come to America and don't even want to hang out with African-Americans. They tell each other, like, don't hang out with the African-Americans. All that black man going to do is get you pregnant and abandon the baby. Then you're going to go out and shoot somebody and go to prison. And then your kids won't have a daddy. That, that's what they think about us. Why do they think about us? Well, because marketing works. And there's no greater, more impactful form of marketing I can think of excuse me, think of than hip hop music. Hip hop music is the ultimate social media influencer of all time. There's nothing that markets a message stronger than hip hop music. Russell Simmons, a friend of mine, was one of the first people to figure that out when he got his brother run to do a run DMC concert and told everybody to hold up their Adidas in the air. Remember when they used to do my Adidas and he got them to hold one Adidas in the air and the Adidas executive was there and said, oh, my God, you got all these people to go buy Adidas just because you put it in a song. So they signed them to a deal right then. Because they knew that the music has an influence. It has a, an influence on how you think and what you do. It also has an influence on how other people see you. It affects how people see you. And, and so, so to me, in my view, the reason I believe, my argument is this. You, can, you have a right to disagree with me. You ain't got to agree with me if you don't. That's okay. We can disagree and love each other. But my argument is that because you as a rapper have been allowed to take our brand, to take to, to take the culture that we created in our community and market that to the world and represent us in a way that's not always consistent with how we need to be viewed to survive in a racist society that wants to kill us, you owe a black tax. And it's a big one. You owe us a bigger tax than you owe the federal government. And we know the IRS is going to come collect their money. Well, black people should be collecting, too. And that black tax should include massive billion dollar investments in the black community in black owned businesses and black owned schools. So you can empower economically those black people in the community who got left behind, who can't get opportunities because white folks won't even hire black teachers to teach black children. Well, why the fuck don't we own the damn schools if it's our kids in the schools? Why don't we run those schools? Why don't we make those decisions? We should be the ones who are make, who are who are, who are deciding, deciding what's in the curriculum, not people who don't understand our kids. So so that's 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 what I believe. And, and I don't I don't mean to be I, I probably sound sometimes I get let it out and I sound mean like I'm like I hate the rappers. and I don't. I don't. Mike, the killer Mike is a friend of mine. I like killer Mike. And he did warn me. He said, come on, Doc. I don't want you. I don't want rappers to think that you dislike them. I don't dislike rappers. I love the rappers. But but come on, man, you know, you got to do more. You got to step up to the plate. You know, it, it ain't just it ain't just your success. This success belongs to all of us. Everybody who loved you before white folks even knew who the hell you were, the people who fed you before the, that Jewish lawyer and accountant even wanted to take you on as a client, the people who embraced you before all the white girls were chasing you out of the, the theater in Amsterdam. Those are the people that you owe the black tax to. And you cannot forget that. And you can't just sort of ride your Rolls Royce through the hood and hand out a couple of turkeys at Thanksgiving and think that that's OK. No, we need infrastructural investments in the community. I'm talking about multi-billion dollar projects that are going to employ thousands of people, build dozens, hundreds of schools all across the country. Not symbolism, not, you know, the, I, I bought one chicken shack and I employ five people at the chicken shack. Oh, oh yes, go. Are we supposed to clap? No, I'm not going to clap for that because I know, I know how easy it is for you to buy a chicken shack. You didn't even think about it. Or, well, we built one school. Okay, one school is nice, but I know broke people who can build one school. But a, a guy who raps every day about how rich he is, 
should be building a school system. Like you should have dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of schools. Not just you. you, you if your your pro if your project is no bigger than what King Randall did, a broke twenty three year old down in Georgia, he was broke. He told me he was broke. But that's why he wrote him a little check. Uh, if, if you can't do more than somebody who doesn't have all the wealth and power you have, then what good is your wealth and power anyway to anybody other than yourself? Do you get what I'm saying? Give me a yes in chat if I can say this and still be loved. I don't want to be the hater in the building, but somebody has to do this. And I feel it's important for us to have these conversations if we're ever going to grow as a people. We got to grow up. We got to expect more from ourselves, more from each other, and more from the individuals that represent us. If we do not, then we will always fail. We will always be behind. We will always lose. We will always suffer. So do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Uh, I mentioned to you guys that I would name a stock that I like right now. Um, the a stock, one stock that I like is a stock of uh, the ticker symbols app. It's a company called app loving. And I bought some shares since the market went down today. I'm gonna buy some more shares right now. So, um, app loving is a stock that I believe is going to do well. Also, uh, I want to let you guys know if you want to get a certification in stock market investing, well, we decided to implement certifications. Uh, so we're going to do a level one certification, uh, where we're going to focus on, I'm doing an event Tuesday night. Uh, they, if you attend that event, uh, then you can take an exam and actually get a certificate from the Black Business School. Uh, I want to train you to be teachers in your family. And so the whole event is called Stock Market Decoded. And it's uh, Tuesday night at 8 p.m., Tuesday the 30th, the 30th of August. And it's basically focused around all the myths that keep our people from investing, all the things that make us afraid of the stock market. I'm going to break all that down for you. And then afterward, you can take an exam. Once you take the exam, you'll be eligible to print out your certificate. So then you will have what I what I call a level one certification in the Black Business School uh, on stock market investing. And then we're going to go to level two, level three, level four, if that's what you want to do. So if you're interested, uh, you can get a 48% discount. It's a one-time fee of $99 to join us, uh, but it's 48% off for the next 48 hours. So if you go to boycewalkins.com, look at the top, the link is right there. If you are already a member of the Black Stock Market Program, you can do it for free. So you can either uh, pay the fee and, and do it one time and get access to the recordings forever, or you can do a 30-day free trial in the Black Stock Market Program and get free access. So the URL for the Stock Market Program is theblackstockmarketprogram.com. That's right there. And also the other information is at my website at boycewalkins.com. So feel free to take a look. It's going to be Tuesday night, and uh, and I hope you'll consider joining us. We want to make sure we want to train the whole community so that our people become the leading experts on this earth when it comes to economics, wealth, and investing. That's what BNB One is all about. In my view, it means us being being number one, and we're going to be number one when it comes to economics. If I have anything to say about it, all right, guys. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you have a good day. And uh, and Jay Z, Beyonce, if you hear any of this, don't think I'm dissing you. I I don't hate you. I love you. I think you're great. And uh, I and if you ever have any questions or want me to help in any way, I will help you and I will be glad to support you totally free uh, because I want to see you use your power in a way that's going to benefit you and your family. And, and I, I do think that they are the, among the good ones. I just would love to see us do more. All right. So hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Share, subscribe. Uh, there's my website. I'm going to get out of here, guys. So I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. And I'll be back again real soon. Take care now. Peace. <laughs>